In this problem, we're going to sketch the graph of this vector valued function and indicate the orientation. So by looking at it, you can tell it's going to be a straight line because everything is to the first power. Here you have t to the 1, here you have t to the 1. Recall that you can write this in component form if you like. You can write it as angle bracket t over 8, comma t minus 1. And we can just start plugging in values of t in graph but it's a little more fun to actually rewrite this and write it in what's called rectangular form. So to do that, keep in mind that this is your x component and this is your y component. So x is actually equal to t over 8 and y is actually equal to t minus 1. And so what you can do now is you can solve this first equation here for t. So multiply by 8 on both sides. That will give us t equals 8x. And then what you do is you plug the t into the other equation. So you have y equals 8x minus 1. This is always a good strategy when you have uh, a line. You just call the first piece x, call the second piece y, Solve for t, plug it in, and there's, there's the rectangular form. This is called the rectangular form. So let's go ahead and give a, a rough sketch. So let me change colors here. This will be the y-axis here. And this is the x-axis here. So I'm going to go ahead and label them x and y. OK, so we know it's a straight line. Like if you plug in 0 here for x, you're going to get negative 1. So we'll be here. And if you plug in, right, if you plug in 0, let me just show you so you see what I'm talking about. Boom. See, so we're at this point here, 0, negative 1. And if you plug in 1, um, you're up at 7, right? If x is 1, you're up at uh, 8 minus 1, so that's 7. So we're like up here somewhere. So maybe this is 7, and this is 1. It doesn't have to be drawn to scale. And then you just draw a line and connect the dots. Notice I'm not putting arrows at the end of my line. Okay, so that's a pretty rough sketch. That's good enough for our purposes. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, what matters, though, is the orientation. So let me show you how to find that. So to find the orientation, uh, I like to make a little table. So we have t. Okay, then we have, then we have x. And then we have y. And you can think of your x as this piece here, t over 8 and your y is t minus 1. Right, this is a vector. And so the graph of the vector valued function is like the collection of the endpoints of the vectors. Because all you get is these are the terminal points. So this line is infinitely many terminal points of the vector. It's kind of deep, but it's really cool. So how do you do this? You just plug in values of t, but they have to be increasing. So like 0 and 1 will do it. So when t is 0, you get 0 over 8, so you get 0, and y is negative 1. So we're here. We're in this place here. We already actually knew that. That was lucky and coincidental. So this corresponds to t equals 0. When t is 1, um, we get x equals uh, 1 eighth, right, because t is 1, so it'll be 1 eighth. And y is equal to 0, right, because you would get um, here. You would, this, your y would be 0, right, when, when t is 1. So again, when t is 1, let me just write it again here, x is 1 eighth, y is 0. You might say, wait a minute, t is 1. Oh, this is x. This is different. <laughs> Got to be careful. So that's going to be here. So t equals 1. So now we have the orientation because we're going up. So you just do this. You see, so and that's it. That would be a perfect answer, a perfect graph uh, to the graph of the vector valued function. So again, uh, to graph it, it's a good idea usually to call this x, call this y, and then do some math. In this case, we solve for t, plug that in, and then you draw your line. And then for the orientation, just pick numbers and just go from the smallest to the largest, and then just figure out which way they're going. For example, if t equals 0 was up here, and t equals 1 was down here, then it would be going the other way. So that would have been different. I hope this video has been helpful.